The extrusion command has quite a few different options with it, and I'd like to cover uh, you know, basically how those work. So I have my top orthographic view here on the left and my isometric view on the right. They're both in wireframe. And I have uh, ortho, object snap, and object snap tracking on at the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just in the top view draw some very, very simple shape that we can uh, extrude and kind of play around with. So I'm just going to grab the, um, actually I might just grab the line tool and you know what I might just do is start out with some basic shape that's maybe you know, 8 inches by 8 inches so far and then I could do maybe 4 inches and then just close that off. You know, so I'm just sort of making you know, a fairly random geometric shape and I could even do something like use a circle. Um, you know, maybe I'll come to this midpoint and come out maybe three inches. You know, just so I can show that you can really extrude just about any shape. They can use, you know, curves and all sorts of things. You know, once I have something like this, though I have to keep in mind I need to trim it out and, um, you know, use join to get what I'm actually going for. So I might just come in with uh, trim. So that would be under the modify panel. I'm looking for trim. And I could just select all this, hit enter, and then maybe I'll trim out, you know, this portion. So I'm getting, you know, a more unique shape. Once I have that, I just need to go to modify and grab join and select all of it to get it to join together. And I'm just going to check it by clicking on it. It looks like it all joined together nicely. So the type of shape you have here really doesn't matter. It's just the idea of, you know, getting something a little more creative. So once we have that, what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. And I'm just going to make a couple of copies just so you can see the difference. So I'm going to uh, you know, come up and grab copy, grab the shape that I made, hit enter, and then you know just make a couple of copies of it so I don't have to redraw it. And we can see them over here in my southwest isometric view as well. All right. So what I'm going to do here is just show that, you know, we can in fact just extrude this. So if I come up and grab extrude, select my shape and hit enter, that I can just extrude this, you know, maybe I'll take it up uh, like six inches, for example. And now we have a three-dimensional shape. It's just that easy. I'm in 2D wireframe, but if I switch that to conceptual, you'll see that I'm able to then grab my 3D orbit tool out of my navigation bar and kind of swing around that and see that, you know, I made this solid shape. And it really is solid, so you can think of it as, you know, a block of wood or something like that. So it's, you know, it's totally solid all the way through, not a surface, because we used, um, you know, polyline. Okay, I'm just going to set my view back from custom to southwest isometric. And now I'm going to do it again on the next one over. Okay, so I'm going to come up and grab extrude, select my shape, hit enter. But now notice down in the command line, you know, besides just typing in the height, you have some other options, including which direction we want to go, um, you know, up or down. But we can also do a path or a taper angle. So maybe in this one, I'll type in T because it's capitalized in blue. Enter. And you can actually specify an angle. So it's not just going up straight, but we could actually, you know, type in some angle measurement. So I could say maybe I'll do, you know, 10. Enter. So it's going in 10 degrees. So you see that you know it has a little bit of a different shape to it, and then maybe I'll have it go up, um, you know, three inches. Okay, so then I'm just going to use my orbit and swing around. So you see that instead of going up perfectly straight as the previous example, you know, this one is you know curving in a little bit, getting a little bit more of that you know like pyramid type of shape, um, and that's just the taper angle. So you can create some very different effects that way. I'm going to reset my view to isometric. And then finally, our other option was a path. So what we can do is actually create a unique path to extrude along. Okay, I'm just going to come in with a uh, polyline. And I'm just going to click somewhere on my object. So I might do, you know, this corner. 
Actually, I think what I'm going to do is instead of using a polyline, I'm going to use a regular line. Um, and that's because the regular line will let me go in all the different directions. The polyline, I would need to do a 3D poly. Okay, so I'm going to click at this corner, and I'm coming straight up the z-axis, and it's actually telling me that little information there. Uh, I have the plus z, so I'm just going to go up. And really, the shape we make right now doesn't matter, so I'm just going to maybe go up, you know, about two feet. Just click. And then I'm coming out, although I could certainly be typing these measurements in. And see, what, you, what I'm doing here is going up in space and then over, okay? And if I orbit around, you'll see that I've just made a line that is perpendicular to um, this profile, basically, that I've made, okay? Put that back in my isometric view. But then before I actually extrude it on that path, what I'm going to do is join that together. So I'm just going to select those two lines, not the uh, shape though, just those two lines, and pick join. If I don't do that, it will only go up the one line. It'll cause some problems. That's why I initially um, almost went with a polyline, but it doesn't like to move um, along different faces like that. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is grab extrude, select the shape that I'd like to extrude and hit enter. And now here, instead of just going along or changing the angle, I'll do P for path. And now I'll actually pick this line and it will send that shape along that path that I've created. So if I go in an orbit, you'll be able to see that, you know, you could have a fairly intricate path and this will go all the way along. So it's really great for, you know, trim and molding and you know, all that type of thing. Okay, so that's extruding on a path. And so it was important there that it was perpendicular to my shape, that's really helpful, and that the path I had joined together into a polyline so it goes along uh, nice and smoothly. But you see that there's a lot of options, you know, even available for just extruding your different shapes.